and welcome to Ott and Math. In this edition of Ott and Math, we're going to talk about slope. And then we're also going to do a couple of practice problems. <clears throat> okay, what is slope? Well, slope is just the change in the y value, and we indicate that with a, a uh, symbol called delta, and this triangle here is delta, change in the y component versus or over the change in the x component. <clears throat> so the numerator contains the change in y, and the denominator contains the change in x. Now the change is between two points, so you need at least two points to figure out what the slope is. So I take the values of point two, and let's just say that this is point two here. I'll call it point two. I take the y values and the x values, so y2 minus, here is x1 and y1, and I subtract x1 from uh, x2, and that goes into the denominator. And I subtract y1 from y2, and that goes into the numerator. And that gives me the slope. Now, it doesn't matter if you place the first point first and subtract the second point from the first point. But you cannot mix and match between the denominator and the numerator. So if you're going to find the slope, you can either take uh, or subtract the differences from point 0.1 or you can subtract them from point two, but you cannot subtract the differences <clears throat> for the numerator from point one and then the denominator from point two. All right, let's talk about what happens when we have vertical and horizontal lines. Well, if we have a horizontal line, the value of the y component never changes. All right, so I have a horizontal line, the value of y never changes. X is gonna change, and we don't really know what X is, but Y is never gonna change. So it's always some number. And what we will do is we'll write y, the equation for the line is y is equal to some value. In this case, it looks like it's about negative 4. So I'll write y is equal to negative 4 as the line. <clears throat> and the y value never changes. The x value can be whatever it's going to be, but y never changes. So the change in y is going to be 0. And the change in x is going to be some value. My slope is always going to be 0 because 0 divided by any number is going to be equal to 0. So I tell my students if I bring them zero pizzas or zero bagels, and I divide, divide those zero bagels by 10 or 20 or 30, I'll still give them zero pizzas and zero bagels. So if I start out with zero and I divide it by some number, I always end up with zero. All right, now let's take a look at the example where we have a vertical line. When we have a vertical line, the value for x never changes. So let's say this value x here looks like about a positive 4. So I'll say x is equal to 4. That's the equation for the line. And regardless of what y is, x is always going to be 4. So the x component never changes, although the y value changes. So the change in x is going to be 0. The change in y, we don't know. But we say that if we divide some value by 0, that the resultant value is going to be undefined. So it doesn't make sense to divide something by 0. So if I bring in 10 pizzas and I divide them by 0, then I'm not really sure what I have left or what I'm doing. Now, if I bring in 10 pizzas and I divide them by 1, then I still have 10 pizzas. But dividing them by 0, it doesn't make sense mathematically. So we say that that slope is undefined. All right. If we have a negative slope, that slope is going to be down and to the right. If we have a positive slope, that slope is going to be up and to the right. That means that <clears throat> for every change, positive change in x, we have a negative change in y. Okay, so positive change in x, negative change in y, that's your negative slope. For a positive slope, we have positive change in x, and we get a positive change in y. All right, here's a theorem that I'm going to give to you based on uh, lines that are parallel. So if we have two non-vertical lines and they're parallel, then their slopes are going to be equal. Now, why do we say non-vertical lines? Well, because vertical lines, the slopes are going to be undefined. So we can't say that an undefined slope is equal to an undefined slope. So we need to, uh, we need to place the fact that undefined is not equal to undefined into the theorem by saying that non-vertical lines, uh, we can't include non-vertical lines in this theorem. So we say if two non-vertical lines are parallel, then their slopes are equal. Or also we can say if the slopes of two non-vertical lines are equal, then the lines are parallel. So the theorem works in both directions, so it's reversible. 
And again, if I have two non-vertical lines that are parallel, then their slopes are equal. If I have the slopes of two non-vertical lines that are equal, their lines are parallel. Now what about perpendicular lines? Well, if I have two non-vertical lines that are perpendicular, each line's slope is the opposite reciprocal of the other. Okay, so in this case, I have two lines and they're perpendicular to each other. The line that's positive in black has a slope of three halves. And that means that the slope of the line in blue is going to be the opposite reciprocal or negative two thirds. So there are two, there are two processes in figuring out the, uh, the slope for a line that's perpendicular to the slope of another line or to another line. And we need to take two actions. One is we need to find the opposite sign of the slope of the line. And then secondly, we need to find the reciprocal of that slope. So if I didn't know what the slope of, so we're just gonna erase this here. I'm gonna say we have two lines. We have line one, which is a black line, and line two, which is a blue line. And I told you that these two lines were perpendicular to each other, and the slope of the black line was three halves. And I wanted to find out what the slope of the blue line was. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two actions. The first is, or two steps. The first is I'm gonna change the sign of the slope of number one. And so now I have negative three halves. And then I'm gonna take the reciprocal of this value, and that's just inverting the, uh, the value, negative three halves. Or now the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator. So the reciprocal of negative three halves is equal to negative two thirds. So the slope of the line that's perpendicular to uh, line one is gonna be negative two thirds. So again, if two non-vertical lines are perpendicular, each line's slope is the opposite reciprocal of the others. Or if a line slope is the opposite reciprocal of another line slope, then the two lines are perpendicular to each other. Okay, we're gonna go right into some practice problems. And the first is uh, number 17. Uh, we have a triangle ABC that has vertices A, B, and C. We need to write an argument to show that the median from C to AB is not longer than the altitude from C to AB. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the midpoint of AB. Uh, the midpoint of AB is 7, 2, and we do that, uh, we find the midpoint of AB by taking A plus B, which is 2 plus 12, dividing it by 2, that's 7. That's the X component of the coordinate. And then we find the midpoint of the Y values by taking 2 plus 3, uh, I'm sorry, 1 plus 3, and dividing that by 2, and we get 2 for the midpoint of a, uh, the y value for the coordinate of the midpoint for a, b. So again, the x value is going to be 2 plus 12 over 2, which is 7, and the y value is going to be 1 plus 3 over 2, which is going to be equal to 2. The coordinate of the midpoint is 7, 2. Okay. Now we're going to find the slope of a, b. The slope of a, b, <clears throat> we take by uh, figuring out the change in the y values over the change in the x. So I have three minus one over 12 minus two, and that gives me two over 10, or the slope of AB is one fifth. All right, so now I know the slope of AB and I know the median of AB. Um, I'm gonna find the slope of the median to AB. Now the slope of the median to AB goes from six, seven, which is the third vertex in the triangle, to the point uh, 7, 2 that we defined. So the slope is going to be then uh, 7 minus 2, which is 5, over 6 minus 7, which is negative 1. So my slope ends up being negative 5. So the slope of the median from A, B to C is negative 5. Well, I know that the altitude, the slope of the altitude is also going to be negative 5, because the slope of AB is one fifth and the slope of the line that's perpendicular to AB is gonna be the opposite reciprocal, which is gonna end up being negative five. So the slope of the median and the altitude have, are the same. And that tells us that both the median and the altitude are the same line. Okay, in the second uh, problem, we have a, in any right triangle, we say if A and B are the lengths of the legs and C is the length of the hypotenuse, Given triangle cat is shown, so let me draw triangle cat. Find CA plus AT.
Okay, well, I know, here's my diagram. I know that point T is uh, at the coordinate 4, 0. So I know CT is going to be 4 units. So from the origin C to T is 4 units. Well, I know that CA squared plus AT squared by the Pythagorean theorem is going to be equal to CT squared because this is a right triangle. So CA squared plus AT squared is going to be equal to CT squared. So I know CT squared is going to equal... 16. So CA squared plus AT squared is equal to 16. 